Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Banga City with me, Daniel. It's part 129 today and we are back for two big, big games for Welsh football. We've got Chelsea at home in the Champions League and remarkably, because of the way the group's padding out, despite being battered away at Chelsea, we've got a chance of making it out of the group stages for the first ever time. We then host Aberystwyth, who have had a bit of a surge after a poor start to the season. The other professional side, Haverford West, at the bottom of the league. Something we've got to be wary of. We've just won our last two games by eight and nine goals to nil. So Welsh football is certainly not improving enough to compete with us yet. But if you're looking forward to finding out if we can take the next step and almost wrap up that 15th coefficient place, which will change the country next season, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content. We've got a big end to the head coach series coming up in the next few days. And then the channel schedule will change until FM22. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And please do turn that notification bell on to get alerts every time a new episode releases. There's links to all the playlists in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel, where we're going to have regular football live streams next month. We're going to be watching loads of different games and just having a good chat and hangout. So come and give us a follow over there too. But in the meantime, it's all about Bangor City. So let's go and see what's been happening. You were with me last time for a comfortable 2-0 win against TNS as we had a big run of twos there and then a 2-2 draw at home to Lazio where we nicked a late point. You can see last month we got absolutely battered away at Chelsea. Aside from that though, a couple of solid 1-0 wins given the circumstances and utter dominance in most of the others. So we started the month with a 5-0 win away at Airbus UK. Volkley, Kelly and Jones with one apiece, Jack Vale getting himself a brace. And against Barry and Hibbs, I didn't cancel the games in the international break because it said there were quite a few players still available and only five or six going away. But it actually left us in a position where for the Barry game, we had 14 senior pros and for the Hibbs game, we had 12, including two keepers. So outside the first 11 for the Hibbs match, it was all youngsters. Against Barry, though, we did nick a 1-0 win regardless. Lloyd Golden still there as the top class striker. But if Van Lloyd and Billy Fawkes, the two emergency backups, started together in centre mid, Fawkes, of course, out of position doing that. Matai went in at centre half on the bench. Youngsters Alex Clark and Dan Whelan there. Justin Burrows, another emergency backup. So we did really well to get the result. The same away at Hibbs Reserves in the SPFL Trust Trophy. Tom Jones got a brilliant goal, then got a knock. So Dan Whelan, a youngster, on for him. Paul Higginson, not even got half a gold start. He's a grey star. And he's not quite ready for first team action, but did get an appearance there. We bounced back with our first team note against Swansea Uni. A brilliant 6-0 victory in that one. Bulkley back from international duty got a brace, as did Kane Waters. And then Vale and Reyes added one each. Bulkley in that game got all four other assists as well. So contributed to all six goals. We got battered 5-1 at Chelsea. An early red card from Kai McDonald certainly didn't help. We were already two down though in fairness. But Kane Waters got a 91st minute goal. Just helped us out a little bit. Gave us something to cheer about. McDonald's tackle was atrocious. So as well as being out today, he's banned for the other two matches as well. Three game suspension. That might be a make or break point for the last two matches. We'll wait and see. We bounced back though with a 2-0 win at Cardiff Met Uni. Whittaker and Bulkley with the goals in the first 10 minutes. An 8-0 win followed against the same opponent in a Welsh League Cup quarter final. Two for McKenzie, two for Jones, three for Gordon and one for Vale. And then against Haverford West, a 9-0 victory. Three for Gordon, three for McKinnon, two for Jones and one for Weaver. 17 goals without reply in the last two matches. But against Chelsea, it's going to be an awful lot harder. So let's go and have a look at where the Champions League group stage is. Because rather excitingly for us, Salzburg and Lazio drew in their last match. Now, if they draw again today, with us having one away at Salzburg... A home win against Salzburg in the fifth match for us means with seven points, we will be guaranteed qualification with a game to spare into the Champions League last 16. Remarkable, really, given the events of recent seasons, that we could get to the Champions League last 16. However, what we need, because we're not going to get a result today, is a draw between Salzburg and Lazio. If they can do that, then we win the next game. It could be a very, very special season for us. So let's go and get into it. Let's see what the two results are. We'll be back in a moment to run through the 11. Okay, so here's our squad for the first match of the day. Probably going to need a few rotated options at the weekend. 
The main area of concern is fullback. Matai not fully settled in yet. Weaver has had a lot of injuries this year. And on the right, with McDonald suspended, we've also got Morgan with a hamstring tweak. So that means Passierek's going to start out there. What we'll do when we get into the match is put them on defensive duties. Just try and sit behind the ball a bit more. We'll put Bulkley onto a support one too. And just try and be as solid as possible. Kaio Bulkley now four start, becoming a proper superstar. Got his first goal for Wales. He's now a regular in the team. And he's just a dream. What a player to come for our youth academy. Tom Jones having a good season as well. He's still improving behind him. And there's two options. They're just fabulous at that place. In terms of the lineup for today though, Simankas is in goal. Pasiorek and Matai, the weaker fullbacks with Kelly and Whitaker at centre half. Lloyd at Reyes, Broom and Bulkley, the midfield diamond. When McKinnon and Walters reunited up front. Most of the goals though, based on the season so far. On the bench in the shape of Vale and Gordon. Let's get into it though at home to Chelsea. Can we do better than we did at Stamford Bridge? Let's go and find out. Well a Chelsea side skippered by goalkeeper Gianluigi Donnarumma. That tells you all you need to know about the quality of the side. So we're going to get the lads to prove a point. We're going to drop to balanced. We're going to get the fullbacks on defensive duties. But we're just going to try and close the gaps between each line. So Bulkley will drop to a support duty too. We'll just leave the front two to run at it. And let's hope that on the night we can do something spectacular. If we can nick a draw in this one, really sky is the limit. But I don't think we'll be able to do it yet. Let's just try and keep the score down. Well, what a half that was. Only two shots on target for Chelsea. None that we've seen in highlights. We kept possession quite well. Salzburg have just taken the lead against Lazio, which isn't ideal. But obviously, if we can then beat them and Chelsea beat Salzburg, the same happens. We could be in second. Financially massive for the club. And obviously, if we can get results like this, the coefficient will improve quickly. But I'm sure Chelsea will get a kick up the backside in this half. I know they're going to qualify regardless. But they're going to be a little bit concerned about the performance. Having said that, we've now reached the hour mark and there's been nothing. The longer this goes on, the better. So with 25 to go, let's go and make one change in the middle. Because Broom's on a yellow, he's looking tired, he's looking nervous. So let's get on Tom Jones and we'll drop Bulkley into centre mid. And we'll just see if we can see things out. Because at the moment, this has been fabulous. Though Chelsea have a throw on the left-hand side. And it only takes one minute of brilliance when you've got the quality they have. So they switch the play over to Bello on the right-hand side. Into the area he goes. Don't make the tackle. Out to Walker. Chance to cross. I mean, we've got through three th quarters of this game playing really well. But is it going to come back now? Acuna on the edge. Back to Walker. To Bello. He's got time to shoot. But he's forced backwards eventually. We are fighting for dear life. We are trying our best to scrap it out. But is it going to be enough? What a save. Sam Ancas has made the difference. And this is the difference when you've got a top quality keeper. Aravena on the right, back to Sturm. He delivers to the back stick, fips in, but he can't do anything about that. Right in the bottom corner. It's a fabulous effort. But unfortunately, we've just not been able to do enough. 20 minutes to go here. Chelsea lead 1-0. Let's go and make our other two changes after this set piece. Aravena into the back post. Kenny Bracker heads in. And after three quarters of a game where we've been brilliant, to blow it then on two silly set pieces or two silly aerial duels is really disappointing. Gordon's going to come on up front for McKinnon. We're going to just give a rest to Kyo Bulkley. He'll be replaced by Malone. And hopefully we can see it out without any further damage. We're going to encourage the lads because it's been a decent effort in truth. And hopefully they can just keep the score down for the rest. But the little coefficient point we thought of today is gone. But there is good news elsewhere. You can see from the table on the right, Salzburg a level with Lazio now. If we get the scores up, it is 1-1 at the moment. And that result means this one doesn't matter. If we win at home to Salzburg after things stay like this, we will be through to the last 16 with a game to spare and with only 7 points. As Jones gets the ball on the right byline into Walters. Blocked by Bracker, I thought he just missed that in truth. But we are putting up a fight, even in stoppage time. As Matai gets down the left, wins a throw in. Can we get a consolation? Can we get a goal? A home to one of the best sides in world football. Matai throws in from the left-hand side by the corner flag. Plays a 1-2 with Walters. There's options in the box. Goes back to Reyes. Into Tom Jones. Got a man over on the right. It's Gordon. Back to Jones again. Shots just wide of the post. But we have looked solid. And we've competed. That's all I can ask for. 
There's a few tired legs that I'm pretty sure won't be fit at the weekend. With four minutes of stoppage time played in a Champions League game between Bangor City and Chelsea. We made them fight and we had them worried. That's all we could really ask for. What we desperately need to hope with our fingers crossed is that the other game has remained 1-1. Because if it has, our Champions League destiny is in our own hands. Forget about the Europa League last 16 curse. We could be in the last 16 of the Champions League. And I'll tell you what, the next episode will be back slightly shorter if that game can achieve that. And it has remarkably finished a draw. Salzburg won, Lazio won. Because of our head-to-head -head record and having one on the road, if we beat Salzburg and Chelsea do the job against Lazio, we will be through to the last 16 of the Champions League with a game to spare. I'm so excited. It's a massive moment. I'm already looking forward to the next episode. But we've got to do a job against Aberystwyth first. And we'll be back in a moment for that. So we face Aberystwyth with Gwyn Morgan back to full fitness. Again, loads of players called up for international duty. However, we were able to withdraw Chris Broom because they've only got two friendlies, Barbados. The problem I have, I've cancelled the league game, but I didn't cancel the Linfield match. Although that looks like it's been moved now as well because we've got so many players away. We're sort of a victim of our own success. We've got this many players on international duty now. And that might, ironically, later on, bring us closer together with some of the other sides in the nation. Purely because we're doing so well that most of our players leave us six times a season. So that's something that could become a fallout later on. For now, though, we face Aberystwyth in a big game in the Welsh Premier League. They've just started to find form. McMinnamy is still the top scorer in the league. Seven points from three games, and they've been scoring big as well. Owen McMinnamy is the top scorer, 14 in 14 games. You can see he's a really solid player. So Aberyst with his side, I'm looking forward to seeing the progress off. Unfortunately, their takeover collapsed, the one that was talked about with a tycoon investor. But these things happen. So let's see what Welsh football can do. Can Aberyst with keep the good form going? Let's get through, pick our 11, and we'll be back in a minute to run through it. So a few changes for today's match. We've got Harvey Lloyd, who's knackered. Pasiorek as well has dropped back out. McKinnon down to the bench. Bulkley the same. Whitaker the same. Just trying to protect fitness a little bit. Particularly those who we know are going to play international football. Gordon will come in up front alongside Walters. Potentially our partnership for next season if we can't keep McKinnon. Tom Jones back in as the number 10. He's not on international duty by Mark Hughes. For some reason dropped him out of the squad. We've got Price in the holding role replacing the tired Harvey Lloyd. McKenzie coming in at centre half barely weakens us. And Kai McDonald back from suspension at right back with Bryn Morgan back on the bench. So let's go and get into it. A massive game against Aberystwyth and a chance to carry on our perfect record this season. Fingers crossed. As we get into the game here, it is worth remembering that in addition to Owen McMinnamy, one of our former youngsters, Jason Williams, and a few of the others, so Papadopoulos was one of ours as well, they did sign well on deadline day, Aberystwyth. Kavanagh and Wakem really strengthened that midfield. And they've picked up most of their points since then. So maybe by next season, particularly if they could get some investment, they'll be a really good side. I presume the takeover talks will continue at some point. Maybe not with a tycoon. But just with a chairman that's willing to spend, that's willing to back them. I mean, their goal difference is very good. So it's just that there are three whipping boys in the league. Haverford West, the big spender, is one of them. And we're trying to get Aberystwyth back up there. As we pick the ball up on the right-hand side, it's a bit of a rusty one from McDonald, that. It's cleared long downfield, though Kelly gets there. It's a brilliant challenge. Plays it in short to Reyes in midfield. Kai McDonald over the top again. Goulding gets there. Walters is in the middle. Brilliant goal. Easy as you like. And that front two next season could become our new Duffy and Dean. It could be that good. I'm looking forward to watching it. A brilliant start to the match for Bangor City. Five shots, five on target in ten minutes. And we open the score in two as Broom puts a free kick in. Goulding edged just over. It was a great opportunity. But couldn't quite take it as Thomas Barker takes a long goal kick. All the way towards McMinnamy. McKenzie heads away. Been a bit unhappy this year. Not had as much football as he would have liked. But he has now signed a new deal. Only a couple of hundred quid a week more. So we're happy enough with that. As Matai gets it on the left wing. Picks it back to Broom. We've withdrawn him. So he's got two weeks off after this. And he picks out Gordon with a brilliant cross. But again, in the air, Gordon not good enough. Puts it over the bar. He's not actually the worst header of the ball, so I'm not sure what's caused that. Been a brilliant signing this summer. For one and a half million, looks an absolute bargain. But given the dominance we've had, given the chances we've had, the possession, 
It's a shame it's only one, as the free kick in from Jones, too close to Thomas Barker. And he's able to deal with it well, the keeper. Holds on to it as well. Long ball downfield. Kelly hoofs it clear. Nichols will get there the right back. Back to his keeper again. They're not really able to get out here, although McMinnamy does bring that one down. Then his pass is over hit to the right back, and they have to start again. Long ball forward to Matai. It's just too easy to intercept at the moment. Simankes gets it. Out to Jerome Kelly. Into Reyes in midfield. Goes wide to McDonald. He should be one of the freshest players in the team. Releases Gordon. Wards is in the middle again. As is Jones now. But it's back out to McDonald. In towards the box. Back towards Tom Jones. Hits his namesake and drops down. Matai gets there on the left hand side of the box. Delivers past Wakem. Reyes at the back stick. Just beyond him to get the shot away. Back into McDonald. Blocked to Chris Broom. And he passes it casually into the empty net. Didn't go flashing at it, didn't try and smash it like everyone else. Just saw the gap between the two defenders and rolled it into the middle of the net. McMinnamy goes off injured, that could be big for Aberystwyth for the season. But we look comfortable, we're into double figures for shots on target. And we're keeping the ball well, so saving fatigue too. It's been a perfect display. It would of course be lovely if we could be better in front of goal, but I don't think we can complain too much about that. It's been a really solid performance. And for the fact that some of these players are actually going to get time off now is really beneficial. When we get to the hour mark, we'll make a few changes ourselves. But there's not much to dislike about this one. 58 on the clock, let's go and do it. Three changes to be made. We'll get Bulkley on so he gets closer to that appearance record. Morgan can replace Jerome Kelly. What we'll do then is we'll just put Matai in at centre half. Because Jerome Kelly's having to travel for international duties, playing for Jamaica. So we want to protect him. Tom Jones I'm going to play. I'll take Reyes off because he'll probably play in the break. Srom the youngster can come on for him. And then Bulkley on four. Do I take Broom off? He's got two weeks off. Let's take Tom Jones off. Bulkley on as the number 10. And arguably that one strengthens us. And we're back with 25 to go as Kai McDonald plays it down to Gordon on the right. Srom's inside of him and finds McDonald. Good to see some of these youngsters linking up. McDonald all the way into the box. Crosses for Kai O'Bulkley. What a player he's become. We had a brief look at him at the start of the episode. He's got so much ability now. And even if we continue to improve and play at the top level, I still think before the end of this save, Bulkley will be the best player that ever comes out of this academy. I just can't see there being a better one. As Simankas plays out to Matai, who's covering in at centre half now. Goes long downfield, but it's easy for Papadopoulos. Gives it away to Bulkley though. Gordon releases Kane Walters. It's shot straight at a keeper. Thomas Barker's had a pretty good game given the circumstances, but it's not been enough. As Bulkley puts in a dangerous free kick, Scott McKenzie just wide. You saw I probably, I was already half celebrating, but it goes wide of the post. Into the side netting. For the sake of Aberystwyth, I'm a bit worried about McMinimi's injury. But overall, it's been a really good display. With 3-0 up, we look completely confident. And if we'd had our shooting boots on, it could have been an 8 or 9 like the last couple were. Yes, we're not playing quite as bad a side here, but we are looking just as dominant as McDonald gets it at right back over towards Gordon. He's still got Walters in the middle, as is Bulkley. It's over hit past everyone and it'll go out to left back where Grim Morgan is. He can take on his man, but instead play short to Bulkley. Broom plays a 1-2 with him. Out to McDonald, flying down that right wing yet again. Cuts it back to Kyo Bulkley. And it's blocked away as far as Kavanagh who hoofs downfield. McKenzie out to Morgan again. It is relentless pressure. This is proper Bangor City Football Club. Flying forward, not letting them out of their own half. As McDonald releases Bulkley again. And he gets his brace off the bench. What a fantastic display. And Kai McDonald down that right wing, to be fair, has been utterly unstoppable. Three assists in a 4-0 win. No shots at all for Aberystwyth with barely any possession. And the perfect end to a very good episode. Champions League destiny in our own hands. We could make history in the very next episode. And we're on course for a perfect season so far domestically. Doesn't get much better than that. Well, bad news for our visitors on the night as their star striker is now out for up to eight weeks. Kai McDonald was absolutely brilliant. I mean, you just can't deny people who create that many good chances. We're not going to be able to keep him forever, but he's been one hell of a success story for us. I didn't realise it was a fan date. We had nearly 2,500 in. I'm sure a few of them will be coming back. But if we look at the schedule, we're not going to come back for the last game away at Lazio. We're going to be back in two days' time. Because if we beat Salzburg and Chelsea get a result against their Italian opponents, 
we will be through to the last 16 of the Champions League for the first time. And that is a night and a moment that I have to capture on camera. It could go wrong, of course. We'll keep our fingers crossed it doesn't. So if you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy this episode, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. Of course, the head coach is coming towards a thrilling climax now. You can see the final ever episode of our club career up in the eye above. And then we could just have one or two more major tournaments as an international manager. Just a couple of weeks to go in the series. So please do go and check that out if you haven't already. There's also a link to the Twitch channel where we've got regular live streams, including football watch-alongs when the new season starts next week. I'd love it if you could join along and come and watch those with me. And then, of course, we've also got the new food channel too. And you can subscribe by clicking up in the eye above. But a big thank you for watching. Your continued support as always. History is never far away with Bangor City. So next time, we'll see if we can complete the Champions League job and have another glance at that Welsh coefficient. I'll see you there.